Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with another one of our Double Shot interviews and I'm joined now by Adam Feely, the Chief Executive Officer of the Serious Fraud Office. Thanks for joining us, Adam. Thanks, Gareth. Busy week um, in terms of announcements out of the SFO. Obviously, the big one, um, the uh, investigation into related party transactions involving South Canterbury Finance. Now, you've said, suggested at this point you're looking at five related party transactions. Are these all loans that were made by South Canterbury Finance to other parties? Yeah, I mean, while we don't want to get drawn too much into the detail at this point, uh, essentially uh, that's the nature of the transactions we're looking at. Um, and, and as I've said many times, um, you know, some people are starting to pick up on the fact that related party transactions per se are not the issue, but rather um, what effect that might have had on the financial position of the company. And, and from an ECFO point of view, most importantly, um, whether um, those transactions should have been disclosed, how were they, they were how they were disclosed, uh, and whether the absence or manner of disclosure um, gives rise to any suggestion of um, fraud on on the part of people within South Canterbury. And is it possible at this stage to put a value on these loans, or a, a rough uh, estimate of a value? Well, the the, the ones we've looked at, um, they're, they're certainly material. I think all add all added up, they sort of sit around maybe around the 40, 50 million mark, but but it's, I mean that's, the value of the loans, um, the consequences on the company of course are a slightly different issue, so they are certainly material to the balance sheet of, of South Canterbury and the question then is um, what were the consequences, including the financial consequences um, of um, those loans on, on on the position of the investors and also equally important on the position of um, the Crown Guarantee Scheme. And, and obviously th these loans were between 2005-2009. They were there when the company was admitted to the um, Crown Retail Deposit Guarantee Scheme. So there's a, a bigger issue here too as to what should or shouldn't have been disclosed um, for the company to get into the, the, the retail deposit guarantee scheme and then if they became known whether they should have stayed in that scheme. Yeah, exactly. Again, look, I'm sorry to um, harp on about it. It is early days. We, we, we are still working um, through the process, but at the very least some of those loans appear to have been made uh, in as early as 2005, may indeed have been made earlier than that. Um, on the face of what we've seen, they were certainly on the books and... Um, as you say, arguably um, should have been disclosed uh, under the terms of the, the Crown Guarantee Scheme. Um, and again, whether they, w w whether there was any ongoing um, either obligation to disclose or whether any of these statements put out during that period gave a, a false impression as to the state of the company. Yeah. Okay. And look, in terms of, of, of people involved, I mean, can you say anything about Alan Hubbard or Ed Sullivan or Lockie, uh, Lockie McLeod, who was the CEO of South Canary Finance, are these people likely to be implicated in, in this investigation? Um, short answer is no, we can't say anything about names, but uh, we are looking at the affairs of South Canterbury and people will draw their own conclusions about whether any officers or directors of the companies um, could be part of that. The difficult thing for us at the moment is we don't know the specific roles each individual played in these transactions. We don't know what they said. We don't know what they knew. Some people could be witnesses. Some people could be suspects. Some people uh, may have been completely unaware that these things were going on. Can you say anything about where your information came from that you've, you've acted on? Um, we have had information more, from more than one source, um, but a lot of our information came from one of the independent directors within South Canterbury. Are you able to, to name that director? Prefer not to at the moment. And obviously you, you've come under a bit of flack in the last couple of days from, from NBR um, a, a, about your approach to, to get some information from them. How do you respond to, to, to what they've had to say? It's, to be honest, it's, it's unfortunate they've, they've responded the way they have. Um, we asked them for the information for, for a number of reasons. Um, their story disclosed a crime, and that's the starting point. Um, they ran a story which said a crime had been committed. We had to follow up on that. Uh, it also named an individual. So there's no question about confidentiality of sources. We we weren't breaching any confidentiality. Confidentiality. They named someone. Um, so we said, look, well, we've we've heard from this individual. He's not sure that your story is necessarily representative. We will be interviewing him. We'd like to, however, to have your notes. Do you have a problem with that? Their answer was no problem at all. Um, they then responded by saying, but we think it would be appropriate for you to serve us a notice. 
which is typically what we do when we're seeking information. Um, I spoke with uh, the reporter in question that afternoon. He had received the notice, seemed very relaxed about it, and the next thing we knew it had been turned into a freedom of press exercise. I'm at a loss to understand it, but look, as far as we're concerned, still I'm going to take up and we'll move on. Look, in terms of this, um, I guess, this investigation into South Canterbury Finance, it's a company that's been under a lot of scrutiny as part of the, the Crown Retail Guarantee Scheme by Treasury, by Cordamentha, over the past 18 months. I mean, did they miss all this? Look, I don't know, um, and it wouldn't be either appropriate or fair to comment on that. I think as we uh, move our way through the case, um, in a certain sense, uh, they can be viewed as possible victims if a fraud has in fact occurred, uh, and therefore we will need to talk with them and we'll need to understand um, what they knew, what they didn't know, what they were told by various people within South Canterbury. So those are discussions we'll be having in the, in the next few weeks. I guess if, if, if you do conclude that a fraud has been committed here, the ultimate victim is, is the taxpayer through the guarantee scheme. A lot, a lot of caveats around that statement. Uh, you know. The biggest being if there is a fraud, but certainly if we find that there is fraud and we find that it was fraud which enabled them to enter into a guarantee scheme, the consequences have been immense in financial terms, yeah. And look, I mean, obviously you've been investigating um, Alan Hubbard and Aorangi Securities, Hubbard Managed Funds and various charitable trusts, associated char charitable trusts for three months or so now as well, around three, three four, three, four yeah. months. Um, look, I mean, is there, is there likely to be any crossover between the two investigations? Um, probably at peripheral at best. Um, we've actually got separate teams on, on, on the two cases. We see them as quite different transactions. Um, we are very much towards, it, as I've said a number of times, the, the, the back end of the investigation on, on Aorangi Securities, with the caveat that certainly on a week-by-week -week basis information has changed and, and could continue to change. Um, but no, uh, I think we will be um, winding things up fairly soon in, in the ASL investigation. The South Canterbury is a, a very different matter. It is going to be an, another large case, and as I've said before, um, it'll be months, not days, before we know where we stand on it. Look, I mean, in terms of, of um, Alan Hubbard, obviously he's a figure you know, at the centre of both these investigations. Um, he's got his support base, obviously, who've been very vocal through all of this. One of the suggestions that they and maybe some others as well have thrown up is that maybe he's been manipulated. Do you think that there was any manipulation of him um, by other people? I, look, I don't know, and, and even if I did, I probably wouldn't comment. Um, we certainly understand the strength of feeling uh, around um, Mr Hubbard as an identity. Um, it is difficult for us to see some of the comments made for the simple reasons when we're in an investigation we can't always clarify the facts. So this, we, we've certainly seen um, mis misrepresentations and half-truths um, there, but uh, I'm sure that at the end of our investigation, um, to the extent that we have a good picture, um, that will come out, and then there is a far bigger picture, which is the statutory management as a whole. At some point, I'm sure the, the, the full facts um, around uh, Aorangi will, will come out. At the moment, a lot of speculation. Uh, it's unfortunate, but it's inevitable.